Yo, what is up guys, Grim here, and in today's video, I wanted to discuss a brand new way of team building, which when I saw it, quite frankly, shocked me, and I had to investigate how it was even possible. It's a way of team building which doesn't need two healers necessarily, or the premier defensive five stars which a lot of people have come to rely on. Now, these players don't have those units, but they definitely do do have some pretty good relics so it goes without saying that your mileage may vary but there's definitely a lot of method to their madness and what we're going to be delving into in this video is exactly that so in the background here you can see that we have team one here on memory of chaos 10 which have taken it down successfully now this team doesn't feature a healer which is a massive red flag if you guys didn't know, after Memory of Chaos 5, when you start getting into 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, the damage starts to become astronomical. Even with level 70 and 80 units, it is no joke. You can get wiped in one or two cycles, and it is a really tough ask to go in there without any way to recover your life. But how did this player here do it then? They don't have a healer, they don't have Japard, they don't have Bailu, what's going on here? All they're using for defense seems to be March. How does that even work? Well, it all comes down to a new way of thinking, a new way of approaching the game, and that way of approaching is a much more proactive one focused on breaking and controlling the enemy at all costs. Currently, many of the end game meta team compositions look very much like this one here. They contain one damaging character, one harmony character generally, and one to two sustaining characters. Generally, it's gonna be two. So what am I trying to say here? Well, you're gonna notice something very specific. So when we talk about break and control, you'll notice that this team has pretty much none at at all. When it comes to break, my Japard is only going to be using his basic attack. That's all he's got for break. Bailu similarly is going to be using her basic attack. That's it for break. And Ting Yun, you guessed it, just her basic attack. None of these characters have an ultimate that breaks or a skill that breaks, which I'm personally going to be using. And Ting Yun, worst of all, is going to be only basic attacking half of her actions. So literally all my break potential is coming from my DPS. Now this DPS could be any element, quantum, ice, physical, lightning, you name it, they could be that element. And they're going to be breaking a lot, especially when factoring in the favor of Amber, which is this cycle of Memory of Chaos' buff. But that's just not enough to consistently break an enemy and keep them broken for very long. Even though characters like Yang Ching, Sele, and Jing have good amounts of break, which are the premier DPSs right now, it's not enough to fully control the combat scenario. Now, when we return to the team we looked at earlier and we apply the same logic, let's take a look and see what happens here. We can see that this team consists of a very different lineup here. We've got our usual damage dealer here, Su Shang, who's gonna be breaking, no worries. But then instead of a healer, as well as a shielder or defensive support, we have two very different characters here. We have a nice utility character as well as a preservation character focused more on control. So Pella here instead of like Bailu is going to be breaking on her basics similar to Bailu but she's got an ultimate here which does an AoE ice break for two break units which is a massive deal. Overall that's going to contribute a lot more break to the field and the battle and is going to make breaking the enemies and controlling them substantially easier. But then this player is also so replace the tanking role here or the role of Japard in my team I showcase here with March. Now March does still bring defense to the table as well as taunting and in addition to that shields but she also brings a tremendous amount of break. Whenever she's attacked with her shield active she's going to be counter attacking. In addition to that her ultimate also breaks in an AoE for two break units as well. 
Now, overall, what does this mean? Well, it means that this comp here doesn't need to necessarily have a healer because they are able to proactively control the enemy and disable them from even being able to do anything. A lot of enemies are significantly more threatening after they activate a ton of buffs, and those buffs can be immediately stripped off as soon as you break them. So focusing on breaking can basically substitute for a healer because the enemy is doing so much less damage. Not only are they losing all their buffs, not only are they losing special mechanics, and not only are they taking more damage, uh, they're not only going to be frozen in some cases, but also in addition to that, their actions are being delayed on top of all of that. So there is so many defensive aspects to break that these players are pulling it off. Now, what is especially special about the characters they have chosen here is the typing of the characters. So the player here has decided to use these two characters specifically, as opposed to some other supports or other breakers which they may have access to. So March here specifically is ice, and Pella is also ice. They are both controlling elements. Now you'll notice here that the enemy is in fact weak to ice, and it would probably be far less effective if they weren't weak to ice, but there isn't just one controlling element in the game. There is in fact three. There is ice, imaginary, and quantum. And I think that breaking for these elements is such a defensive boost that we can now assume that it is actually team defining in order to do so. Now the enemy here, after discussing a little bit with a few people using this strategy, you can absolutely just stun lock them for the most part and disable them from using most of their abilities. And that really is what's going on here. Here. Now there is quite a few different powerful candidates who are capable of manipulating the enemy in this way and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about them and really talk about the potential of this break composition which we're starting to see come to the forefront which sacrifices sustain and shields in favor of break and control. All right, before we go too deep on break and talk about all the possibilities, I wanted to give you guys the roundup here and actually talk about the viability of this strategy because it's clear it works. They've gone all the way with it and it definitely does seem promising, but what about the future and how does it actually play out in the long run? Well, let me talk to you guys a little bit about it. So the current strategy, which uses a healer and a tank is definitely more universal and definitely more future-proof from my perspective. And the reason for that is that it doesn't matter what healer or tank you have, you can bring them to every single fight regardless of the typing that they are because they don't really matter they're not going to be breaking anything the only thing you need to worry about is making sure your dps is the correct type so that you can at least break the enemies a tiny bit so that you don't get absolutely bulldozed by some massive stacking buffs and that's why this is definitely a little bit more foolproof however of course not everyone has access to these units they're not very easy to get and they're not very plentiful so if you don't have access to bailu and you don't have access to japad well people are seeing success with it so how good is it? Is it viable? Well, absolutely. People are using the combination of Pella as well as March as a substitute for a tank and a healer. So you've got one pseudo tank slash breaker as well as a breaker. And that works just fine. But a lot of enemies in the Memory of Chaos 6 to 10 span here have one side who are very susceptible to ice. And that really is a big, big deal. Now you can, of course, break any enemy enemy for any element they are. And you can also use March as a bit of a stopgap to freeze enemies with the ultimate if you have enough effect hit rating. Now, what might be a little bit touch and go though is if an enemy is freeze immune on both sides. Now, I don't see that, that happening anytime soon. So I think the strategy is probably gonna work pretty well for a good amount of time. But you definitely do need to be able to control the enemy that you are up against. And as soon as you're in a position where you cannot sufficiently control an enemy like you cannot break them or you cannot freeze them or you have no way to interact with them very frequently you're going to be in some serious trouble in terms of this strategy because you do not have any sort of mitigation you do not have any sort of sustain with this kind of lineup now i do actually see that being a little bit easier in the future but you really are leaning on having a breaker of the type which you are looking for here so right now a lot of people are using pella as an icebreaker and they're using serval as a lightning breaker and this is kind of what they're going with here they're using one 
or the other to effectively break the enemy a ton and that works out just great and we're seeing a lot more units enter the fray as well another good choice would be welt welt would also be another great one we'll talk about him in a second here but it's fair to say if you are unable to break the enemy you don't have the typing required and the enemy is immune to the crowd control that you are looking to use you could be in for a whole world of trouble just always remember that whenever you're playing without a healer you're always balancing your team survival on a knife's edge and breaking for the right element at the right time is going to be critical for success now it also goes without saying, knowing when to time your crowd controls and having more damage to shorten the length of a fight is also going to make things a whole lot cleaner. Alright, so we understand that there's definitely some risks, but it's definitely very viable. But what if I told you, I think that there is a third option, which in the future is probably going to be the go-to, at least for myself and maybe a lot of other players as well. So we've already determined you either need to control the enemy or you need to defend against the enemy. What if you use both at the same time? So one thing I want to point out to you guys is that this controlling team actually does more damage than the defensive team, which I showcased earlier using by and Japard, and that's because it has Pella present in the team composition, applying her defense shred to the enemy. So I think that it's better to actually use a bit of a hybrid approach. Hopefully it's actually possible, and I've already seen signs that it is. Using one strong sustaining character alongside one strong breaking character will likely yield the best of both worlds. You'll be able to sustain your team pretty much indefinitely with enough gear on a character like Bailu, and because of the fact that you're breaking you'll get the defensive benefits you need and in addition to that you'll also be gaining a massive advantage with the damage that you are providing and bringing to the table now of course we don't have a preservation character here which may definitely be a bit of a demerit but i think that this kind of a team is going to be what i'll be pursuing in the future to take advantage of breaking and controlling but also enough healing to make sure that i'm not going to be in any danger if i do take a hit or two now it remains to be seen whether or not doubling it down one way or the other is better than doing a hybrid approach but we'll have to see how that plays out i definitely think it's a viable option all right so we understand that break is pretty good in the short term you can get through memory of chaos without a second healer and you can make do but we're also talking about how it's going to be so powerful potentially in the future by combining healers and breakers and going for a hybrid approach and it looks like the characters coming down the line in 1.1 are certainly looking to support that idea quite strongly luocha is a healer who is imaginary that's control typing right there. In addition to that, he also has an AoE ultimate that breaks pretty much everything for two break units. Or at least that's what we can see so far. Which means that he is a healer that also breaks at the same time for a controlling element. That is not something we've seen before and is exceptionally powerful for the playstyle we've just discussed. Next up is Silver Wolf, a character who is Nihility and has a ton of break on her kit, who is fully capable of building pure speed as well as break effect with a bit of effect hit rating. In addition to that, she can also implant weaknesses, which allows you to break for even more types and a lot more flexibility with who you're breaking and when. So she's also a massive break candidate and a big part of this archetype as well. And finally, we have Yukon, a harmony character who is themed around breaking as well. The only character who rivals her in breaking right now in the harmony category is Asta. Kong looks to be pretty interesting. In addition to that, similar to the other two, she is actually defensive typing as well, being imaginary. So it definitely seems like Mahoyo is pushing break and the ability to break, and I think that it's going to be a big deal moving forward, and the ability to break for controlling elements, I'm very interested to see how it plays out. It's fair to say it's already showing a lot of potential with players clearing memory of chaos without healers. It's fair to say that it's only going up from here. So if you guys learned something new and you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more, and if you like this one's specifically or you have any other suggestions make sure to chuck it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below until next time hope you guys enjoyed cheers